Hello ladies and gentlemen, your dear old Uncle Me is back, but instead of taking you to see Men in Black 2 and then leaving you at the theater, I've got a handy little Grim Dawn guide for you. With the plethora of endgame options at your feet, it can feel overwhelming trying to figure out what to do after hitting that sweet, sweet level 100. In this year's video, we're focused on specific loot farms that set you up with powerful and versatile items that can put your character over that endgame hump. We're going on three primary factors, accessibility of the loot to new players, versatility for the items to the greatest number of builds, and power of the items in any final builds. So sit back, close your eyes, turn on some Kenny G, and let's do the damn thing. With patch 1170 making it easier to get great rare drops, rares and monster and frequent farming just got a whole lot more valuable. With that in mind, our first stop is to the Broken Hills so we can farm the Guardian of Solisle for a pair of Solisle Sec leg guards. These slim fit pair of Levi's come with tons of useful resistances, but what really makes them stand out is the 2-4% attack damage converted to health, which is an incredibly good stat for any build using weapon damage abilities. I highly recommend this farm to any freshly capped characters, as the first hurdle anyone has to jump over in order to become a fully viable endgame character is getting all resistances up to 80%, and a well-rolled Soleil Sect leg guards with prefix like Stonehide will go a very long way in that regard. Also, Guardian of Salile is super easy to kill so long as you start the Hidden Path quest, which takes you all of 5 minutes. In the same vein, we're going after the beef with the teeth, the maul with it all, that's right, the original main baddie Lagerain, for his shoulders, Lagerain's corruption. The first thing you might notice is the plus 3 to Doombolt, Albrecht's Aether Ray, and Flames of Ignifar, which should be looked at as a handy bonus for anyone who does use those skills, and not the main course, which of course is the percentile boost to defensive ability, offensive ability, and physical resistance. All of which are premium stats and will get you even closer to that mythical 3000 defensive ability you need to not get crit and exploded upon. Most level 100s should have decent enough gear to slog it out with log, and all you need is to have clear the main campaign. If you haven't yet, or if ultimate log is just a bit too much for you, you can always drop it down to elite difficulty, as the only real difference in those shoulders as far as base stats go is armor rating. The easiest farm on this list is most certainly the Intrepid Warboots and the Stoneplate Greaves. There's a very good chance you already have the blueprint learned, even if you're still very new to the game. On the surface, these may not look like much, but don't let the base stats fool you, as these bad boys can roll with both a rare prefix and a rare suffix, making them very serviceable, especially if you haven't found the right footwear for your build, and for the low low cost of just 3 scrap and a single scavenge plating, you simply cannot beat that value. Just keep in mind that you might have to craft a few pairs before you land on the boots that are right for you. This next farm features an item I use in almost all of my builds, and that's Kaizen's Eye, dropped from the Eldritch Nemesis, Kaizen. This amulet comes in two distinct flavors, Electric Lime and Berry Blast, or Burning and Eldritch. Which one you go for depends on which stats you need. If you're lower than 80% stun resistance, Eldritch is going to always be better. But if your stun resistance is capped, Burning takes the cake. The real reason to use this amulet is the global plus one to all skills, which is such a strong attribute that goes further than most raw stats ever could, juicing up the efficacy of all of your abilities and giving you that extra oomph to your static buffs. The barriers to this farm are twofold, the first being that since Kaizen is a nemesis boss, he is a sharp difficulty step up from most enemies in the game. Despite that, I find him to be one of the easiest nemesis bosses. Being a pure melee fighter, a range build that's careful with kiting and cooldowns can take him out no sweat, even if you are undergeared. The second hurdle is, of course, achieving nemesis status with the Eldritch Horrors, which can be easily done by farming Temple of Atef in the Roots of Abid. As with all Nemesis bosses, he can spawn in a bunch of different places, so you'll need to go to Grim Tools Monster Database and search for Kaizen Eldritch Scion and click on the Spawn Locations tab. Or, if you're feeling lazy, you can just follow the link in the description. Our last farm is certainly not the sexiest on this list, but it is likely the most important. And that is of course Ugden Bloom. In order to make the incredibly necessary endgame components, you'll need these flowers by the bouquet. The simplest route requires you warping to the gloom-walled crossing rift before traveling east and hugging the wall, making sure to check the two rotting stumps before heading past the den of Caraxes to check if there are any Ugden Bog Shambler elite packs that spawn near the treasure chest. Build back into the den of Caraxes to scope the area for more elite Shambler packs. 
After that, warp back to the Gloomwald Crossing Rift, this time heading southwest, running through the jungle outcroppings off to the side of the road to kill any vine creatures or shamblers while checking for totems. Hook back in towards the main road, heading in the direction of the Devotion Shrine to check the area around the Devotion Shrine for more shambler packs. If you're feeling spicy, I recommend the Ancient Grove Roguelike Dungeon, where you can easily scoop up 6 plus blooms as well as a litany of legendary items, but be warned, this is not for the faint of gear. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like what you saw and you want to see more Grim Dawn content, I've got bushels upon bushels waiting for you on my channel. If you want to support me, touch my buttons, ring my bell, and buy my shirts. I don't have any merch, but I will sell you my actual shirts that I wear on a day-to-day -day basis. We can haggle in the comments.